Look here, 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 7. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 7. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, as dwell with your wives according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of God, that your prayers be not hindered. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this time. I pray for your empowering and grace physically, spiritually, to be able to clearly communicate this text. And we pray that you give us the right application from it, that you work in all of us, open our understanding, work in us to will and to do of your good pleasure. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So we've already looked at this. And if we if we go back, we've started, when we started back with a believer's relationship to the government, and then a believer's relationship to like employer to employee, employee to employer. And then regarding a believing wife to her husband, we've looked at these relationships and there's been a key concept. What was that key concept? It was the matter of submission. And so when you look at this text, though it deals with the husband, look at all of our points. The points on our outline are this, how to submit, this is talking to the husband. What submission does, talking to the husband. And why submit, again, talking to the husband. So I think you can tell by that that I'm proposing that what we have here is the matter of a husband submitting in respect to his wife. And before you have opposition to that, I think what we're going to find is that that is exactly what we have in the text, and there's strong biblical basis for that. And we'll make some clarifications and caveats to help remove some of those concerns. One commentator stated it this way, the theme of Christian submission, talking about verse 7, the theme of Christian submission is now applied to the marriage relationship, the most intimate and restricted human relationship. Talking about, I'm sorry, all of verses 1 through 7. Talking both about the husband and the wife. And so that is exactly what we have here in the text. In fact, if you look at it, the word likewise is referring back to that common string of submission commands. Likewise, now the husband is to do this. And so there is something here that is to be of same character as what the wife did. Now, let me ask some trick questions. I'm going to tell you at the front end, these are trick questions. Okay. So be careful. Don't, please don't answer these questions. Just think about your answer. Is what we find in this text a description of how a man must arrange himself under his wife? The word submission means to arrange oneself under another. That's what it means. We can't change the meaning of the word. Is this what we find in these verses? And the answer to that is absolutely. That is exactly what we find in these verses. Let me give you another commentator. Listen to this. The spirit which made the wife meek and quiet would make the husband... What was the spirit? A spirit of submission, arranging, arranging himself underneath his wife, would make the husband this, kind and attentive. Do we have any biblical support for one of lesser authority arranging, I'm sorry, one of greater authority arranging himself or herself under another person of lesser authority? Do we have any exhortation that would indicate that? Well, listen to this, Ephesians 5.21. It's all-inclusive, and it's a mark of being filled with the Spirit. It says this, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Okay? That's all-inclusive. In other words, this, let me, let me put it this way. This is also talking about that a parent has a relationship of submission to their child. Submit yourselves one to another. It's talking to the, to the church. Okay. Let's listen to another one. 1 Peter 5.5. 5. The context of 1 Peter 5.5, 5, in fact, we can just turn over it to it since we're here. Look at, look at this. Look at verse 5 of 1 Peter 5. Look at that, and you'll you'll agree with the first part of it. Likewise, ye younger, this is younger in the church, submit yourselves unto the what? 
elder. Do we have any problem with that? Not at all. But look at the very next part. Yea, how many of us? All of you be subject or submit to whom? So the elders are also supposed to submit themselves to those who are younger, according to that text. So we have this in these two texts, and here's the question, or here's my question for us. How, how, how does, when we look at the matter of a husband to his wife, what is the most dominant New Testament command that we usually think of regarding a husband's responsibility to his wife? Husbands are to do what towards their wives? They are to love them. Okay, what I would like to propose is that what you have in this text is one of those manifestations. This is a manifestation of the husband loving his wife. It is submitting to her. Second point, if you look at your note, the first was an act of love. The second point is this, in a different what? In a different way. What do I mean by that? Well, the wife arranges herself under her husband by taking a position of being under him and submitting to his what? Leadership or authority, his headship in the marriage. Different way. The husband arranges himself under his wife, not, 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 by taking a position of being under her headship and submitting to her leadership. That's not what it's talking about. Just like it's not talking about the elder in chapter 5 arranging himself underneath the authority of the younger. That's not talking about that there either. It's talking about then in humility giving his God-given, giving himself to his God-given responsibilities. Okay. In other words, it's an act of submission to his wife to be her head to be the one that God has placed in that role in the marriage. That's his act of submission to his wife, but not just that. It's to give of himself for her, to nourish her, to cherish her, to edify her, and to do exactly what we find in this text. That is the responsibility of the husband. And if you wanted to put all that together, you could say, well, that's love, and it is to nourish is love, to cherish is love, to edify her, that's love, to give himself to her, that's love. And what we find in this verse, in chapter uh, 3, verse 7, that is love to arrange himself underneath her. Now, let's, let's work that out a little bit more. Thirdly, it's according to Christ's example. It's according to Christ's example. And I'm, I'm pulling from some other uh, texts. Uh, in this, I'm pointing from Ephesians 5, 25 to 27, because here we really have a, a definition by example in Jesus Christ. If you go down through it, who is it speaking of? It's speaking of Christ. How did he love? He loved by giving. And why did he love? He loved for the best, for that purpose, for the one he loved. Listen to the text. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and, and without blemish. Now, let's ask a question. What was Jesus Christ doing when he went to the cross? It was an act of what? An act of love. But what he was doing as well, that, that love included arranging himself actually underneath his creation and doing for his creation what they could not do and ministering to them. Ministering. The word minister has the idea, the, the whole word minister means to serve, serving us. That, that sounds like an act of submission, and it most certainly is. So we looked at how to submit. It's an act of love. It's in a different way than what a wife does or what we might think of with the common idea of submit. But we have an example of that in Christ, and we have other New Testament exhortations. Now, what submission does? What submission does? It does all those other things that we find uh, that love does, okay? But 
when we talk about submission, submission is going to do something specific. I should say it does have a certain area that's specific within love. That's what I mean by that. So within love, you have nourish, you have edifying, you have giving of yourself for her. But here, submission is going to, as an act of love, submission is going to do something towards the wife. How would you do this unless you submitted and arranged yourself underneath your wife? Two things, to live with understanding. That's to live with her with understanding. To live with understanding towards his wife. And secondly, to honor her as a fellow believer. So to have understanding and to honor her. Do you see submission in that? Okay, let's let's work down through it in just a minute. So let's let's look at this. The first part to live with understanding. Dwell with them. Dwell means to live. Dwell with your wife according to knowledge. It's not just talking about something intellectual, is it? Okay, but it starts there. What do you what other word might you give there for the idea of knowing your wife and living with your wife according to that knowledge? What is another word besides knowing? You need to know your wife or you need to what towards your wife? You need to understand. <laughs> okay. That's understanding implies knowledge, but it implies that it's accurate and it's within context. So what's the source of this understanding of this, of this knowledge? What's the source of it? Is it our buddies at work or is it the, is it a nice movie or a, a good book? Is that where we get understanding? Well, let me put it this way. You might get great help from a friend by saying, hey, you know, some word of correction or some word of encouragement. You might even get help from a book on the subject to help guide you in some areas that are blind spots. But the knowledge is going to come by arranging yourself underneath your wife. <laughs> There's th That's how it comes. To, to make yourself the one that is looking upon her to minister, to serve her. Okay. How can we know how to live with our wives according to understanding, to really nourish them and give of ourselves to them if we don't arrange ourselves underneath them as their servants, to serve them as Christ served and gave himself to the church? This is not sacrificing your position or your role as the head of the home and your position as a, uh, as having that position of authority in the home. That is not sacrificing that. Just as Christ did not sacrifice himself as the head of what? The church. So this implies that we should not live with them in ignorance. What's one of the most common concerns or complaints that a wife would have against her husband? Yeah, you don't listen, implying that you don't what? Yeah, you don't know me, you don't understand me. Exactly. Exactly. It, the, 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 the challenge for the wife is that they feel that they are not understood. Okay. And I'm not saying this out of a position of like, you know, I'm like, Mr. Live with my wife according to knowledge. <laughs> okay. I, I have, I have my struggles with this. I have, you know, we're at 30 years now and I'm still learning still growing. I fail all the time in this area. Okay. So it's not like I'm putting a casting blame on anybody. What we're looking for, man, is we're trying to be Christ-like and we're never going to wholly reach that, are we? It's never going to happen. But we can consistently seek by God's grace to be brought to that. And this is the key if we will ever live with them according to knowledge. We must arrange ourselves underneath them. Let's put it this way. If we are standing above them or outside of them and looking down on them, how well are we going to understand them? Right? But that's the way many wives feel. Many wives feel that way. And that's really why the husband isn't understanding her. It's because the husband is standing with this posture. She doesn't ever, she never really gets that sense that he's arranged himself to her. Okay. And so this is really critical. Uh, ignorance is not something that, that we want to admit freely, but it's most often our problem as husbands, and uh, it is to, to our own shame. 
Now there's a caveat here, dwell with them according to knowledge, but the caveat is this, as unto the weaker vessel, that actually goes with this matter of dwelling, it doesn't go with the next part, it goes with this matter of dwelling, it's a caveat. Uh, let's ask a question, what is that talking about? Well, obviously it's talking about this. The wife is different from the man, the husband, right? If if it's 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 a it's weaker as comparative, the wife is different from the man. The man's posture in looking at it would be one that some of those differences would be qualified by being what? Weaker. Okay. Let's put that to the side. The idea within the text at least is saying this, that typically, though not wholly and by any means, but typically uh, there is a difference physiologically and many times emotionally between a husband and a wife. Okay. Now let's ask a question. Since this is an overarching Holy Spirit inspired way of talking about the wife, that must imply something. That implies that God made her that way. And that is exactly the way she needs to be for the husband. So let's go a little bit farther with that. If God made her that way, what is it if a husband becomes frustrated with those elements in his wife? Who is he getting frustrated with? Yeah, her creator, with God. His frustrations against his wife in this realm, these are frustrations against God. And we best not posture ourselves against God. Instead, what we're being called on is to understand her. And part of that understanding, it gives us a little bit of a clue and a hint. Part of that understanding is this element of a weaker vessel. It's not something to be frustrated with or bitter about. It's something to understand and to give ourselves to as Christ gave himself to the church and to arrange ourselves underneath her and dwell with her according to this knowledge, this understanding. Well, the second part is to honor as fellow believers. And certainly you do understand this, that to give honor, to show respect and to esteem, to lift up, it's not, it's not to, to pull them up, it's to lift them up. And it re requires even if you think of it in an in, in actual physical way, the right posture for that would be to arrange yourself underneath. That's the way proper honor is given. And one of the great uh, issues uh, within our culture, and it's within the church, is not only men that are not living with their wives according to knowledge, but we have husbands that are not honoring their wives. And within the church is to honor them as fellow believers. What does that mean? What does that imply? Well, if you look at the text, really it, it lists it out for us as being heirs together of the grace of life. In other words, the moment this life is ended and the inheritance is acquired, there is what? Equality. Remember, the role in marriage is a designated role. It does not change the value of the person or of their position before God. It does not change that. And then lastly, we have this. We have how to submit, what submission looks like, or what submission does. And here's why submit. This is really what we need to just lock onto just for a second. It's very simple, but 
we have this. We have a warning that your prayers be not hindered. There's a lot of uh, throw around with this, what this is talking about, that you know you won't be able to pray with your wife. But let's take it, really, this is talking to the husband, and I think it would be this, that there is, there is an impediment to God answering these prayers. There's a warning here against husbands that do not do this that do not arrange themselves underneath their wives by doing what? By living with them according to knowledge, by uh, by living with them according to understanding, and then also by honoring them, okay? Those who do not do that, there is a resistance to that, there's a resistance to that man's prayer. That's what the text is saying. And let's just leave it right there. And absolutely, God has this, the same kind of promise in other kinds of contexts in other places in the word of God. We're not going to go through those, but it's just to say there's weight to this. That is what it's saying. Now, what does that imply? What's the implication? First word there under why submit is a warning. Second is implication. What's the implication? You have it there. God cares about how I treat my wife. God is looking at me and how I treat her. He knows if I'm doing this truly in my heart, in my experience, in my marriage, if I'm arranging myself underneath my wife, if I'm living with her according to understanding, if I'm honoring her as a fellow believer. He knows my heart on that. He knows what I'm doing as well. He knows my heart and my act. And he cares about it. And therefore, we have a warning really from God himself to us. It is a warning from God to us. It's powerful. Now, what does this imply? You can just put this, I have this on the bottom of my page. I just put equals underneath subletter B, and I have a statement there. What does this imply for husbands? How should we dwell with our wives? How should we live and conduct ourselves in our marriages? In the what? In the fear of God. I think that's what it's really implying. If a husband is not dwelling with his wife according to understanding, if a husband is bitter and frustrated with wife with his wife because of the way she has been made by God, if a husband is not honoring his wife as a fellow heir of the grace of life, the husband is not doing that, there is this warning for that man. And it comes from the very one who hears and answers prayer. The wonderful thing about this is this. Six verses, and I said this earlier, six verses to encourage wives in difficult marriages. <laughs> six. And it's tender, and it's all encouragement. You don't, you don't have a warning in verses one to six. All you have is tons of encouragement, encouragement to your faith, encouragement to how you live out your life, encouragement from the Old Testament. This is what godly women did before. You have one verse to men. That verse comes with direct statement and with a very sobering warning against men. This is very serious. And if you think about it, if this is dominant within the culture, outside of the church, most likely it has crept within the church. And so wherever this is existent within the church, you have men and they do not have an effective what? You do not have, they do not have effective prayer lives. Yet you go to 1 Timothy chapter 2, and one of the key exhortations to what should take place within the church is that men would lift up their holy hands and pray to God. But the, if they're doing this, it's ineffective. Really what that starts to do, if it's not resolved, there starts to come other elements within that. And so it is a strong word to men. Just conclude with this. You know, uh, Hudson Taylor, missionary to China during the 19th century, he married uh, Maria, and uh, Hudson and Maria Taylor served there, uh, and it was a beautiful Christ-honoring marriage from what we know. 
they, after some 12 years of marriage, Maria took ill, and on a Saturday morning, July 23rd, 1870, with her husband by her bed, Miss Maria Taylor went to be with the Lord. Later in a letter to a friend, Mr. Taylor wrote the following. He wrote, he and he only knew what my dear wife was to me. He knew how the light of my eyes and the joy of my heart were in her. The last day of her life, we had no idea it would prove the last. Our hearts were mutually delighted by the never old story of each other's love. As they were every day, nearly, and almost last, almost her last act was, with one arm around my neck, to place her hand upon my head, and as I believe, for her lips had lost their cunning, to implore a blessing on me. But he saw that it was good to take her, good indeed for her, in his love he took her painlessly, and not less good for me, who must henceforth toil and suffer alone, yet not alone, for God is nearer to me than ever. And now I have to tell him all my sorrows and difficulties, as I used to tell dear Maria. Let's pray. Father, we do thank you, and thank you for this 